Hello and a very good morning to you all here from the Pilgrim Parishes. We join together this morning to share this service of worship and the Word together. We might not be able to see each other, we can not physically with each other, but through God's Holy Spirit in the same way that we are joined with God in worship this morning, so we are joined with one another. Uh, my name is Ian Elliott and it is my privilege to be able to lead us in our act of worship this morning. And before our first worship song, let's worship God together by saying the words of Psalm 148. Shout praises to the Lord. Shout the Lord's praises in the highest heavens. All of you angels and all who serve him above, come and offer praise. Sun and moon and all of you bright stars, come and offer praise. Highest heavens and the water above the highest heavens, Come and offer praise. Let all things praise the name of the Lord, because they were created at his command. He made them to last forever, and nothing can change what he has done. All creatures on earth, you obey his commands, so come, praise the Lord. See monsters and the deep sea, fire and hail, snow and frost, and every stormy wind. Come, praise the Lord. All mountains and hills, fruit trees and cedars, every wild and tame animal, all reptiles and birds. Come, praise the Lord. Every king and every ruler, all nations on earth, every man and every woman, young people and old, come praise the Lord. All creation, come praise the name of the Lord. Praise his name alone. The glory of God is greater than heaven and earth. Like a bull with mighty horns, the Lord protects his faithful nation Israel because they belong to him. Shout praises to the Lord. Cloud, a strange and lovely sound I hear it in the thunder and rain It's ringing in the skies Like cannons in the night The music of the universe plays We're singing you Yeah. 
worship song reminding us all that the whole of creation praises God. And as we come here this morning, we come here with all sorts of baggage in our lives, uh, all sorts of wrong stuff that we need to say sorry to God for. So let's now join together in a brief act of corporate confession. And I invite you to say with me the words that will be appearing on the screen. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love us and care for us all the time. We know that this week we have not always lived the way you tell us. We have done wrong things and not done all the good things we should have done. Only you can save us. So please forgive us and help us to live as your friends. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Alison is going to bring us our reading for this morning. The reading is taken from Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30, the parable of the bags of gold. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold bought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things, but I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid, and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant! So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags, for whoever has, has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them, and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Alison. You know, we, um, we tend to spend a lot of time uh, waiting, it seems to me. Um, at the moment, we're rapidly approaching the, the season of Advent, a time of waiting and preparation, uh, a time of preparing and waiting for Christmas to arrive, and a time when we also uh, prepare ourselves 
as we look forward um, and wait for Christ's coming again, his second coming. And of course, there's other things that we are waiting for at this time. We're waiting for lockdown to end. We're waiting for uh, a vaccine for COVID-19 to be rolled out. We're waiting for this pandemic to finish, to end. And we all know uh, the time, the day that we're going to be celebrating Christmas, Christ's birth, his first coming into the world. Uh, we know at least provisionally uh, when lockdown will be ending and hopefully that date uh, will be a firm date. Um, but there's all sorts of other things that we don't know. We don't know um, exactly when the COVID vaccine will be rolled out. Uh, we don't know when Jesus will be returning. There's all sorts of things um, where we wait for things when we don't really know uh, when they are going to arrive, when things are going to come to an end. And this morning in our reading, we had a story, one of Jesus' stories, about uh, three people, three servants, who were given um, money to deal with while their master went away on a journey. And they didn't know when their master was going to return. And the question, of course, was what would the servants do um, with the money that they had been given? And, of course, this story, because it's a story from Jesus, isn't really about money. It actually comes after Jesus has been talking about the end times. Actually, it is about Jesus talking about what we do while we are waiting for his return, what we do with our time, our energy, with the things that he has entrusted us with. That is the main point of this story. Um, and two of the servants receive one sort of uh, commendation from the master when he returns. Um, he says to them, well done, good and faithful servant. But to the other, his response is, you wicked, lazy servant. Two very different responses. And there are three things that I want us to uh, take away from this reading this morning. And the first one is this. Our abilities and our talents are gifts from God. They are gifts from God. Um, in uh, his book, The Holy Spirit, Clive Calvert um, identifies 28 different gifts um, that can be discerned from the Bible that God gives us. Um, things like words of wisdom, healing, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, miracles, um, evangelism, administration, uh, pastoral guidance, helping, intercession, leadership, giving, a whole host of gifts. Some of them appear to be very spiritual. Some of them appear to be quite mundane, the sort of things that we exercise maybe in our day-to-day -day lives. Things like administration, hospitality, sharing a cup of coffee with one another, with our friends. They are all gifts and we all have at least one gift given to us by God. And the second thing is this, God's gifts are given to us to be used. I'm sure uh, we all remember the imagery um, used by St Paul in his letter to the church in Corinth, 
when he talks about uh, the church being a body made up of different parts and how each part has its place uh, to work in the functioning of the body. If, if one of the parts isn't working properly, then the whole body um, suffers. So our gifts are given not just for ourselves, not just for our benefit, but for the benefit of the whole church and to an extent for the benefit of the whole world. The church needs us to exercise the different gifts that we have been given. And they all work together for the purposes of worship, mission and service. So that might be in leading worship in church. It could be on being on the PCC. It might be in being involved in children's work. Uh, it may be that we need to be exercising our gifts of administration so that the church can work smoothly. Maybe being befriending others. Extending hospitality with making tea and coffee. Um, it might be sharing the good news with others. Um, it may be pastoral work. It may be praying. Praying and interceding for the world. Praying and interceding for our community. All these different gifts that we need to operate in the church and of course none of us can do it all alone we have to work together using our different God-given gifts um, not worrying about our own personal agendas but working together for the furtherance of God's kingdom extending God's kingdom working for the mission of the church and the third thing is that our gifts increase when we use them effectively. Um, I'm going to use the example initially of footballers. Um, that's because I'm interested and I love football. Um, Cristiano Ronaldo, Leon Messi. They are two, or probably the two, uh, greatest world talents in football at the moment. Now, yes, they have natural, God-given, shall we say, talents. But they are not at that level that they are at today without training. They train to hone those gifts, to make those natural abilities that they've been given um, increase day by day. They train to improve their gifts. Um, Anybody who plays sport will know that if they're not playing, if they're not training, and then they go back, effectively they, they become rusty for a footballer, uh, particularly a striker. If he's not training, scoring goals, if he's not practicing, then those shots that he used to make really easily suddenly become really hard, and they, they, they don't put away those, those clear-cut chances. Athletes... Um, who don't train are no longer reaching those levels of speed that they were. And the shot putters aren't um, reaching the extent of their shot put as they were before. There are some players who, and people who continually train to the extent that actually they reach levels that others who have perhaps a much greater natural gift just can't reach because actually they're not putting the hard graft in. There are many examples of that, uh, particularly in football. Um, players who reach levels because they are using their gifts, they are exercising the gifts that they've got day by day to actually hone them and make them even better. And what this means is that the gifts that we've got, the more that we use them, um, the, then the more natural they become the more proficient we become in using them, the more effective we are in using them. And of course, conversely, if we don't use them, then ultimately we lose them. And of course here, we do have divine help. We're not alone. We have the Holy Spirit 
who is there to help us, to help us hone our gifts, to help us use them effectively and develop them. So through this story, God is telling us that our faith doesn't deepen if we allow our Christian lives to stagnate. Our faith deepens as we exercise and use our gifts. Um, the Christian life is often likened to being on a journey. And of course, the journey itself um, implies a continual moving onwards towards a destination. A journey where we stand still, we stop, we cease to travel, actually becomes no longer a journey. Um, writing to the Colossians, uh, Paul had this to say, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the, reward, from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. We are all called to sacrificial service. It is God who we are serving. So this morning, I encourage all of us to um, truthfully examine ourselves, um, to ask ourselves, are we using the giftings that God has given us? As I said earlier, we all have giftings. So if you're sitting there this morning and thinking, well, I don't really have a gift that God has given me, then that is wrong. And what I would encourage you to do is seek your gifting. Pray about it. Ask God to show you through his Holy Spirit what your gift or what your gifts are. Because we all have at least one gift. And you may well have many gifts. So ask God to give you the wisdom to discern them. And if you know what your gifts are, or as you discover what your gifts are, then ask God to uh, give you opportunities, more opportunities even, to use those gifts. Um, to give you opportunities, maybe to give you the courage to step out and use them. Remember that you are not alone. You're the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, is with you and he will empower you. He will be with you. The important thing here is this. Um, let's not be like that, um, that third servant who just stuffed the gift away, just buried it away and did nothing with it. Don't sit idly back and do nothing. Let's determine this morning, all of us, to use our gifts to serve our Lord and Master to serve God, to serve our God who gave himself in such a way through his son Jesus Christ, that great sacrifice that he made. So let's use our gifts so that when our time here on earth is up and we finally meet God face to face, he can say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. And so as we ponder this time of waiting, as we ponder on the giftings that God has given us and how we can and should be using them, let's worship together as we sing the song Waiting Here For You. If faith can move the mountains 
clouds Let the mountains move We come with expectation We're waiting here for you Waiting here for you You're the Lord of all creation And still you know my heart The author of salvation You've loved me from the start Waiting here for you With our hands lifted high In praise And it's you we adore, singing hallelujah. you 
it's you We adore Singing The day of the Lord will hold terror for the wicked and unprepared, but rejoicing for those living in God's light. Gathered as God's people via technology, let us pray. At the end of each prayer, there will be a response after I say, we thank you for all your gifts, Lord. The response, teach us to use them wisely, is displayed on your screen. Holy God, if we are presuming on your mercy, alert us and shatter our complacency. If we are doubting your mercy, affirm in us the reality of your forgiveness. May we, as your church, here in the pilgrim parishes, encourage and warn, but never condemn. Acknowledge sin, but never judge. We thank you for all your gifts, Lord. Teach us to use them wisely. Holy God, raise up your prophets to speak out your truth and draw attention to whatever needs changing in our world, our expectations and assumptions, our management of resources and finances, our system of government and our attitudes. May all people, especially those who govern and protect us, come to recognise your truth. We thank you for all your gifts, Lord. Teach us to use them wisely. Holy God, fill our homes and places of work with so much love that tensions and barriers melt away, conflicts are resolved and troubles lightened by being lovingly shared. In these troubled times, where we had all but given up, open our hearts to hope again. We thank you all for your gifts, Lord. Teach us to use them wisely. Holy God, may all in misery and despair turn to find you close beside them in their heartaches, not condemning, but loving them in their pain. May all who are locked in terror or guilt be set free, and may those who have long-term illness be strengthened to persevere, freed from resentment and anger. We thank you for all your gifts, Lord. Teach us to use them wisely. Holy God, Lord of the living and the dead, we commend to your mercy all who have died and thank you for that eternal healing which frees us from all pain and suffering. Surround those who mourn them with your love, peace and grace. We thank you for all your gifts, Lord. Teach us to use them wisely. Holy God, we thank you for the gifts and talents you have given us. Give us the courage to use them for the good of our lonely planet. A merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, please join in with the prayer our Lord taught us. The words are on your screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Ron. So as we come towards the end of our service, before we have our blessing, we're going to worship again in song. And I know that for some of us, um, using the gifts that God has given us uh, perhaps takes a bit of courage. Um, it can be scary. It might involve stepping outside of our comfort zones. And so we're going to sing this song together now, which is entitled, You Make Me Brave. 
and let's make that a prayer to God. Let's worship together.
And so we come to the end of our time together this morning. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, I pray that you all have a really good week. And in the meantime, let me just finish by praying a prayer of blessing. Christ our King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Goodbye. from heaven this isn't second guessing we know that we are protected may the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message grace and favors in your nature in your essence may favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand Children, may His favor be upon you, and a thousand generations.